Mixed Pairs, a gymnastics event which promises some alluring combinations. Russians Alexei Namov and Svetlana Horkina will be the favored pair. Sexy Alexei and the woman who posed in Russian Playboy. Quite a photo op. For gymnastics, sponsored by Sony, let's go out live to the Nassau Coliseum and Greg Lewis. Thank you very much, Jim Lampley, and welcome inside Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum as we get set for day seven of gymnastics. It is mixed pairs competition, and working with me, well, gymnastics broadcasting's best mixed pair, Kathy Johnson-Clark and Bart Connor. Bart, what is this all about here as we look at the uh, most decorated medalists so far in these games? Alexei Bondarenko getting warmed up. Well, the mixed pairs format was re actually created about 20 years ago here in the United States. and It's kind of like mixed pairs tennis where the men and women scores are added together and, of course, you have Alexei Nyamov and Svetlana Horkina together. They'll be doing their best events and so when you have the best in the world doing just their best events and prize money on the line, it should be pretty interesting. Well, then, Kathy, is this uh, all serious or is it a little fun mixed in as well. I think it's a lot of both. Actually, I mean, this is a great, fun format for these kids to enjoy themselves in competition. We might even see a little bit of personality, especially from this young lady. I think we will. But they're very serious because they're doing a high level of difficulty here. A lot of great gymnastics we're going to see, so we'll see good focus and concentration. But you know, no world Olympic titles on the line, but the pressure, let me tell you, when your partner goes up there and nails their routine, trust me, they're feeling some pressure to hit theirs too. Well, we see the pressure in the eyes of these competitors. Let's take a look at the rules for this mixed pairs competition. It's over two days. Men and women select two apparatus each day. The vault is excluded from the competition. 14 teams start this all out and will compete in the first round. Top 12 advance to the second round. And then only the top eight teams will advance to the third and fourth rounds. That will be tomorrow. And today's points don't carry over. So here is Alexei Bondarenka, who has won four medals in these Goodwill Games and is looking for his first gold medal. He's got an all-around silver. He's also got a ring silver. And he is the 98 European all-around champion. Now, Greg, the way this works, there are five events available for the men to perform on and three for the women. The men can do the floor, the horse, the rings, the parallel bars, or the high bar. The women can do the floor, beam, or the uneven bars vaulting because there's no room on the floor to do both men and women's vaulting. Vaulting has been eliminated. So the gymnasts are selecting their best events, and we'll see Bondarenka right now on the rinks. 5'3 and 117 pounds of power on this 19-year-old Russian. It's just about the perfect body, especially for this event here where strength is such an important aspect always think that the slight body build of these gymnasts is rather deceiving. He's only 117 pounds. He looks a lot beefier than that, but the key in gymnastics is your strength to weight ratio. You need to be enormously strong and very light to do some of the strength moves that you're going to see him perform here. Inverted iron cross, not bad. Now, the most exciting part of his routine comes up here towards the end. He's going to do these double somersaults within the rings. The first one laid out. This one here is tucked. And then he tries to freeze that into handstand. Nicely done. You need to demonstrate control in that handstand. Swing forward and backward to the handstand. Wow. Oh, great routine. Beautiful landing for Bondarenka. And his score will be given after his teammate's score. This is just a terrific angle to see what's going on in these double somersaults tucked and then swing the second one around up to the handstand and just freeze it in the handstand. Nice. So Bondarenko waits now to see how his teammate does. The future of Russian gymnastics right here. Anna Kovalyova, just 15, and she is on the floor. The 1998 Russian champion on the floor. And Greg, I believe she has a bright future if she continues the way she has been competing at such a young age. Terrific talent.
there's certainly room for some polish. She really has a nice combination of everything. Nice technique, good difficulty. And a very pretty presentation. Anna Kovalyova, a personal charge of the Russian gymnastics titan, Leonid Arkayev. So if he puts his signature next to them, that means this is my chosen one. Inter interestingly enough, her coach, Lena Mashinskaya, worked with her for many years, and now Arkayev is starting to take over more control of her development. It's really exciting to see raw talent. I mean, as I said, there's there's room for improvement. I can pick out the little things, but but it's all there. She just needs to put it together and polish it. We await the scores for the Russian team of Bondarenka and Kovalyova. She's considered one of the rising stars of the She's got that spunky smile. And over in the kiss and cry area, as they call it, I think the, there'll be more kisses than cries from this team. Now we move to Lu Yufu of China. His teammate is Meng Fei. He was a finalist here at the Goodwill Games on the parallel bars. Only scored a 9.2. Had a little trouble. Oh, I love that giant to a pike double back in between the rails. Shows a lot of expert underbar work there. Those are called giant swings when he swings down through the bottom. They were invented about 20 years ago, but I haven't seen many gymnasts that do them any better than this young man. Just 18 years old. Lu Yufu, a most intense look. And the scores for the Russian team, total of 19.20, Bondarenka 9.5. 0.575 <laughs> on the rings and on the floor for Kovalyova, a 9.625. So that total of 19.2 is what Lu Yufu and now Meng Fei must try to beat. Meng Fei, 17 years old, a mere 5'1", 94 pounds, but packed with energy. Those of you out there who love the uneven bars, you're going to love this routine as it is with all the Chinese gymnasts. They're very innovative and exciting on this event. They've always pushed the edge of the envelope. Meng Fei was second at the 97 Worlds on the bars, but had some trouble here in the Goodwill Games. Only eighth in the bars competition, and of course that was after the accident that befell her teammate, Song Lan, and the Chinese have been heroic in their comeback here. Look at the work here, the beautiful pirouette. It's hard to even understand how difficult those are because she does them so well and with ease. Beautiful dismount. Coming up right here. Watch the elegance, even on the uneven bars. Sure, they're dynamic, they're strong, but just gorgeous in the air. Meng Fei. Fourth in the all-around here, these Goodwill Games. And she and Lu Yufu trying to beat 19.2 to take the lead away from the Russians. Interesting angle to see that dismount. I've actually seen her do it better. She looked a little bit sluggish on that, but pretty nonetheless. Very intense look on the Chinese tonight. So far, they have not had great medal success in these games. And we'll come back with their score. Lots more gymnastics when we return. Well, there is the score. 19.150, they're in second. Welcome back for more mixed pairs. It's round one, and at this point, early in round one, Bondarenka and Kovalyova lead by just 50 thousandths over the Chinese team of Lu Yufu and Meng Fei, and now another Russian team, and it is the, well, the Madonna and uh, Dennis Rodman of gymnastics. Alexei Nemov <laughs> gets ready to go. Sexy Alexei is the nickname he's earned, and he was the dominant Goodwill Games athlete in 94. 
here already. He's got a first on the floor. He's the reigning world champion on this event, and his coach, Yevgeny Nikolko, says because he had a lot of choreography training, he's so polished. But, boy, this power in the double-double laid-out position is just overwhelming. That's a more difficult tumbling run than he did in the earlier competitions this week. Get a very serious face on before this performance. You never know what to expect from Namov now. He really likes hamming it up for the crowd. I just love the toe point, the extension, the polish. I think young gymnasts out there should really pay attention to how he presents his routines because not only does he have the power and the quickness. Watch this punch right here to front one and a quarter. Oh, he's a little shorter rotation. He pulled it around and yet he still stylizes the finish. I couldn't agree with you more. It's just beautiful to watch and this is what young gymnasts out there should pattern their gymnastics after. So much emphasis these days on difficulty, but if you don't have the polish, you can't get a good score either. Pike double back. Beautiful. Alexei Nemov. And we'll see just as much flair from his teammate Svetlana Hoyt. <laughs> and there he goes. Give him a little applause, and he is turned on. This is a very important front tumbling sequence. Three bounding skills in a row. And boy, just finishes off perfectly. These elements are called the flares. He goes up the handstand, and watch how he goes down, and it's important to not brush your feet on the carpet as you spin those flares. And Svetlana Horkina, who is the queen of the bars, on the bar. She oh. is exquisite on this event, usually, and I, just, I think everyone held their breath right there in this arena. Almost didn't make it over on that pirouette, but she did it with such style. I don't think she'll get much of a deduction. On this event, 96 Olympic gold, 97 World Championship gold, 98 European gold. She is taking things right to the maximum here, including a great dismount and landing. I think her heart's racing, though, pretty fast on that one pir pirouette move. <laughs> Svetlana Horkina. You notice she has a haircut since a couple of days ago. Some days she comes in the gym, her hair is blonde, some days it's red. I saw her in France about a month ago, and her hair was red, white, and blue. This is a gorgeous move. It's named after her for good reason. She invented it and does it better than anybody in the world, obviously. Look at the straight body line. I mean, the judges love this routine for lots of reasons. Look at the amplitude on the dismount. And, of course, a perfect landing. Well, Niemoff and Horkina. And yesterday, the Russian team in Manhattan doing a little shopping, spending some of those uh, millions in rubles that they have earned here <laughs> in their prize money in these Goodwill games. Prize money for the mixed pairs. First place is $4,000. And, of course, the finals is tomorrow as we await the scores. We'll see these two competing again. Yamov will be on the high bar tonight. Horkina on the balance beam. Greg, you talk about the prize money. They win $4,000, and uh, when you translate that to Russian rubles, that's about, uh, oh, about 250 million rubles. That's a pretty good day's work. Not bad. But uh, in reality, he doesn't know. Oh, here they are. Uh, well, the judging is tight tonight. The score is coming up a little slowly as we move through our competition. And we return to competition. David Cruz of the U.S. Uh, now training in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center there. And he will be our first to go on the pommel horse. His teammate is Jamie Dancher. He was a member of the University of California at Berkeley collegiate team, and then he worked as an assistant coach last year until he recently moved up to the training center in Colorado Springs. He hopes to stay there for the next two years and make his effort to try to make the U.S. team for the Olympics in 2000. And then he's going to go back and uh, go to medical school when it's all over. 
The scores for Nemoff and Horkina. Nemoff on the floor, 9.625. Horkina on the bars, 9.850. Their total, 19.475, and that makes them number one. The other Russian team, Bondarenka, captaining that team, is in second, the Chinese third. The event of pommel horse has gotten more and more complicated over the years. The judges require some very unusual combinations. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight moves on one pommel, and he travels back to the end of the horse. Watch for how long they stay on one single pommel, because the longer they stay up there, the more bonus points they're racking up from the judges. Oh, just a little low in his shoulders there. Kept it moving nicely. A oh, beautiful flare up the handstand. Great helicopter dismount off. David Cruz, 95 U.S. champion on the pommel horse. This is the first American pair. You can watch on this flat pommel. Notice it's flat across the top. In the old days, it used to be rounded, and it was very hard to get your hand placement on there. One of the reasons they can do these eight elements on one single pommel in a row is because that pommel is flat across the top now. Jamie Dancher, uneven bars. Great opportunity for this young lady. She actually qualified for the World Championship team last year, but because of the new age requirement, minimum age requirement, she was too young. She can use this to gain confidence. Good cover-up. She has everything it takes to be great at this level. She lacks a little bit of confidence in competition. I'm glad she pulled that off for her sake. Oh. Just did a tuck double flyaway. She must have been having some trouble with her grips or just didn't feel confident or strong enough there. I talked with her coach, Steve Ryback, and she can do a double-twisting, double-back somersault, but he said she's been having trouble with it. And, you know, it wasn't long ago when she had surgery on her wrist, so she's still recovering from that. Well, it was just in May, as a matter of fact, so this is an impressive return. Jamie Dantzler, second event will be the balance beam, whereas her partner, David Cruz, will go to the high bar. We're going to have some big high bar performances tonight. Dantzler trying to make a bit of a name for herself here has been sort of operating in the shadows of her teammate. And Vanessa. best friend. Yeah, Vanessa Adler. Who won uh, two events here at the Goodwill Games, both the vault and the floor exercise. And this is really good for her. I, I'm glad that she was able to cover that skill because she needs to show herself that not only is she good enough to be here, but that she can cover up tiny little mistakes and get through. When you wait, like Cruz and Danchler are here, do you have a pretty good idea of what your scores are going to be? I think so. I mean, wi within reason. Sometimes something fluky can happen. Well, it's a 9.250 for Cruz, 8.9 for Dancher. When we come back from commercial, we'll go to Jim Lampley as the Goodwill Games continue. Four on the GBS NASCAR. Welcome back, and thank you, Jim Lampley. This is the standings halfway through the first round. The Russians on top, Nemov and Horkina. But then a great performance by the team of Eric Lopez Rios of Cuba and Australian Zena McLaughlin. They're just .25 back now. Bondarenko and his partner have dropped to third. For the Americans, well, so far, the best team is in seventh position. But some great American teams coming up. And well, let's check in now with Amanda Borden, 1996 Olympic gold medalist, our reporter on the floor. Amanda? Well, Greg, I was in a very similar competition to this back in 94, and my partner was Cheney Humphrey. We were winning the competition. I had just nailed a beam routine, and Cheney was trying a very difficult dismount, unfortunately had some problems. And, of course, I have to admit that, that behind the smile, I was thinking, why would you try something so difficult tonight? But we had a blast, and I have my fingers crossed for him tonight, as well as teammate and my good friend, Dominique Dawes. Well, Dominique Dawes is warming up, and uh, we saw her a couple of nights ago. She looks happy and content to be here. Dominique Dawes, more recently, uh, better known to some people as the uh, Grease Broadway performer. Patty uh, Simcox. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. She said the only time she experienced stage fright was when she caught a glimpse of Shannon Miller out in the audience, and she, like, froze for just a split second. Went, there's Shannon. 
and then got back to her lines and all of her dancing. First, the Chinese team of Huang Shu and Ling Jia. And Huang Shu will take the rings. Sixth in the event final in the rings at these Goodwill Games. Currently the fifth best gymnast in the world. Placed fifth at the World Championships in Lausanne last September. We'll focus on a couple of things the judges are looking for. First of all, you need to show strength moves. You can gain bonus by doing a swing move right into a strength move like you just did there and stopping it. Here's another example. Swing to strength, you earn bonus points. You also have to show a swing to a handstand from the backward swinging position. And like this, this is forward swinging to a handstand. Now he's fulfilled all of those requirements. Why not throw in one more iron cross for good measure? Just a little swing in the rings. You notice that'll be a tenth of a point for every swing of the rings. Wang Shu of China, the next uh, World Championships in 99 in China. So they're trying to impress the judges here, leave a good uh, memory of their performances. So they'll do well at home. The whole gymnastics world is fretting that when the Chinese team get as consistent as they should be, that they will dominate gymnastics for the rest of time because they're so well coached and well trained and they have such terrific technique. They'll be hosting the world championships and I'm sure that added motivation will uh, show up in their results. Now Ling Jia and Bart, you and Kathy have been watching her warm up and you both are just in awe. We gave her a 10 in the warm ups. She is a master among masters on this event. The Chinese are always superb here, and she is no exception. Watch these inverted giant and pirouetting moves. They're awesome. Right here. Oh. Beautiful. Right on top of the bar and into a release move. Gorgeous. And let me tell you, that is a long way for her to travel from high bar down to low bar. She's 4'8", 70 pounds. Hard to believe she could have hands big enough to hold the bar. See if she can stick the dismount. Oh! Oh! oh. My goodness. I didn't even sweat that. I was already thinking ahead to stick in the dismount. Mm. Appreciative applause, though. An informed audience knowing what they were seeing was great up to that point. <laughs> She was only a fraction of an inch off. Oh, what a shame. Because that is the best bar routine here, if she had hit. Ling Jia, we'll see her on the balance beam. Really unfortunate here. Just had a little bit too much distance from the bar and couldn't hang on. Never see her miss that. And look at the beauty in the air on that double layout. Wang Zhu and Ling Ji, total 18.850, and that's a little bit of a nervous score. Remember, only the top 12 teams from this round advance to the second round. Jay Thornton. Well, it says Augusta, Georgia, but he's now living in Colorado Springs, training at the Olympic Center there. And a big gymnast, Bart, almost 5'10". Interestingly enough, he uses that size to his advantage. This is a spring-loaded floor, and he can really get a lot of spring out of this mat. He won the silver medal here and deserved it with a terrific exercise. Good start. Just a little shorter rotation there. Thornton and Jeanette Antlin are USA Team 1. It's interesting, he says that uh, the floor is his best event. It's not his favorite event because it makes his ankle really sore. Familiar with that? Welcome to the club. <laughs> now watch this move. It's called a Thomas, named after Kurt Thomas, but he does it in a laid out position. This is one of the best in the world. 
what's unusual is he chooses to do that in the third pass when you're normally a little tired. Nice. Full twisting double. Great landing. He nailed it. The silver medalist in the floor event final at these Goodwill Games. And Thornton is on again tonight. The guys on the U.S. team call him Hoss. You said he was a pretty big guy. He's huge for a gymnast, but sure is powerful. That's the laid out one and three quarter somersault with one and a half twist, almost like a diver. Not Hoss, Hoss Cartwright, though, but uh, Hoss Cartwheel. Oh, this is just the preliminaries. The finals tomorrow night. Now, Jeanette Antlin. Big moment for this young lady. She was the alternate at the World Championships last year for the U.S. team. Watch how aggressively she swings this event. Her coach, Don Peters, loves designing uneven bar routines, going back all the way to Marcia Fredericks, who won a gold medal at the World Championships for the U.S. She's worked so hard at improving her difficulty. the best I've seen her swing this routine. If she can stick to this mount, very well done. Well, she said it's like a dream come true to be here. Now I can show people what I can do. She came full of determination. Jeanette Antlin and Thornton and Antlin, good performances as a pair. I watched her train this in the gym. Uh, about a month or two ago, I stopped in to say hello, and she was having a little trouble on the landing, but she pulled that one off really well. Huh? Yeah. Well, the smiles uh, would indicate that they're quite confident about the scores. Oh, my God. Top score, the Russian number one team, 19.475. That was Namov and Horkina. You can hear her say, my stomach just went completely numb. I think that means... A lot of nerves. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi, Mom, hey, my Dad, Katie Gilbert. <laughs> Everyone back at home? Hi. Home is Huntington Hello, Beach, California. <laughs> Better start going. Chrissy. <laughs> she trains at the famous SCATS program where Kathy Johnson-Clark worked out and many other of America's best gymnasts for many years. Many moons ago and in a land far, far away. <laughs> Well, we'll have their score when we come back, and also Dominique Dawes of the USA. In the conclusion of the first round of the mixed pairs preliminaries, the standings at this point, the Russian team of Nemov and Horkina are in the top spot. Eric Lopez Rios of Cuba and his Australian teammate Zina McLaughlin, a surprise in second, then Bondarenko and Kovalyova in third. The U.S., well, Jay Thornton and Jeanette Antlin are the top team in sixth. The uh, Americans had a good performance. David Cruz, Jamie Dancer now knocked down to ninth. And next up, we're going to see a brilliant rings performance by Sylvester Chalani of Hungary. Generally considered the best in the world now, Bart Connor. Well... By default, perhaps, uh, he won the European Championships in St. Petersburg this spring. Uh, it was the first major competition in a long time that uh, Yuri Keki, the Lord of the Rings from Italy, wasn't there. Keki, many-time world champion and Olympic champion. Interesting story about Cholani is uh, he moved to the United States a few years ago, lived in St. Louis and coached at a gymnastics school there. Then he moved to Sacramento, and he coached there for a couple of years, and he and his wife have a young son and then moved back recently to Hungary because he hopes to train all the way through 2000. And here's a guy who's uh, not exactly a young man, 28 years old. At least not by gymnastic standards. You're making us feel pretty old here, Bart. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should clarify that. He's ancient for a gymnast, but in the real world, he's still a young man. Well, you can always tune in if you can't join us here for the latest from the Goodwill Games and all the sports news by going online with CNNSI, cnnsi.com. For all your sports information, Jelani's teammate, Adrian Varga, and she will be on the uneven bars. We asked him how he 
achieve so much success. And he says, well, when you're born, you have to be lucky. Well, he is lucky that he's short, he's strong. Probably Very. a few thousand hours in the gym to go along with that luck, though. <laughs> As well as he does these strength moves, though, it always bothers me that he can't point his toes very well. The judges do deduct for that. It takes away from the complete presentation in the body line. Nice control here in the handstand. Just a beautiful straight arm giant. Oh, yeah. And he seems pleased, Sylvester Chalon. Again, 14 teams in this opening round. Just 12 will advance, so it's uh, like a missing out. Beautiful position in the double layout. You know, he took fifth here in the Goodwill Games on the rings. Only 75 thousandths of a point out of first. Of course, the gold medal went to a terrific Chris Lamort from the United States. Adrian Varga, the 98 European vault champion will now vault up onto the uneven bars. And that was truly a memorable moment. She's the first Hungarian to win a major title since Henrietta Anodi in 92 at the Olympic Games when she tied for first for vault. Uh -oh. oh, no. Came up short on that handstand. Unfortunately, could not cover it up at, at all. Unique front giant in a split position. Kathy, she has a move named after her, a dismount, but I don't think we're going to see it today, are we? She didn't warm it up. Nope, just a simple front half. Adrian Varga. It was so exciting when she won the European Championships on vault. She said her friends, Betlana Fortina, won two events tonight, but I believe I am twice as happy. Here's her release move. It's a front somersault, little form deduction there. But this was the major break. Just missed that handstand completely. Well, she hasn't had a great Goodwill Games, and uh, when asked about that, she said, you know, I've had a lot of competitions this year, and I'm a little tired. And now she's disappointed because her teammate had a good performance on the rings. She also took fifth place in the finals on the vault, which is one of her best events. We thought she should have scored a little bit higher, but her first vault was not well landed, and the body position wasn't great. So, of course, Vanessa Atler from the United States, that was the first of her two terrific gold medals here. The score total of 18.8 for Chalan and Varga. From Ukraine, Roman Zozulia, his teammate Olga Teslenka. He will start off on the rings. She will be on the uneven bars. He is the 97 Ukraine rings champion. This guy is lean. When you see him in a handstand, he's about as straight as a pencil. Really has beautiful form on this event. I was quite impressed with him during the all-around competition. He was fourth in the all-around, led at one point. There's that inverted iron cross. Another double within the rings to the second inverted iron cross. Oh, he's fighting that handstand. See that nice body line? Beautiful. Look how locked out his arms are. They're actually hyperextended, which is impressive. Oh, beautiful position Pretty in the air. Oh. He's got such style. Roman Zozulia. Had a 9-7 in the preliminaries here, so he has the ability to get a good score, but he was a little shaky in those inverted iron crosses today. Beautiful straight body line. There's that pencil-thin body position. And just gorgeous technique as he swings the front giant Right back to the handstand. Olga Teslenka. Clean, stylish gymnast. I was just going to say, just like her teammate, she has beautiful form here. Sixth in the Goodwill Games in the Bars final. Fifth in the 98 Europeans. 
Greg, this is a moment you hate. You got your hands all ready to go, just the way you like it, with the right amount of water, the right amount of chalk, and then you turn and that red light is still up there. You have to wait for the green light until the judges are ready. And you don't want to go back and start the process all over again, because as soon as you do that, then the green light goes on. It's true that gymnasts actually use a spray water bottle and they water down the bars. And the longer these conferences take, the, ju the gymnast is thinking, the bars are drying out, they're drying out. Come on, give me the green light, please. We're taking a look at the lights, and boy, have I stared at many of these in my life. So what do you do? No, it's just here we go. What did, I actually always redid my chalk. I figured, you know what, I've waited for them, they can wait a few seconds for me. <laughs> what you do in your head, though, to stay cool? Fortunately, these gymnasts are so well-trained. They do hundreds of routines over and over, and they practice under pressure, too. Or they're called pressure sets, where they're must-count situations. Nice high ginger there, beautiful amplitude. I love her toe point. Oh, double front. Very difficult dismount to land. In fact, I think Amanda Borden knows all about that dismount. She actually landed it very well throughout her career. Olga Teslenka. Nice inverted giant into a front somersault. Good amplitude. Look at her toe point. Now, once in a while, she loses that toe point, though, and it really shows up because it's an extreme difference from her gorgeous toe point when it flexes. Chaney Umphrey of the USA. He will pair with Dominique Dawes. He'll take to the rings, and she will be on the uneven bars. Chaney recently moved back to Los Angeles. He was training at the Olympic Training Center up in Colorado Springs and really enjoying that intense environment, but he had to go back to school. You know the problem with Cheney is he's an underachiever. As we get the score here for Zuzulia and Teslenka, a 19.250, and that uh, unofficially is second place at this point. But Humphrey is writing a novel, working part-time at UCLA's orthopedic department, doing motivational speaking, and preparing for medical school starting next week at UCLA. He also plays the guitar, and he's studying Chinese, and he wants to go to the 2000 Games. How many hours does he have in his day? <laughs> wow. There's Ron Brandt, who's giving him a boost to the rings. Ron is the head coach out there at the Olympic Training Center, has done a terrific job with the U.S. men that are living there, many of them living and training there full time. Interesting contrast with Cheney's body style. He is enormously strong, as you can see, but here's a guy who's about 45 pounds heavier than someone like Bondarenka. And actually, pound for pound, he's not as strong as a very lean Bondarenka because he's got so much more mass to push around. I love his face on those iron crosses. You read my mind. He looks bored. Yeah, coach, how long do I have to hold this? <laughs> nice swing work, a little shaky in that handstand. He wants to hold that a little bit longer. Well, he pleases the crowd. You can see it in his face, though. He has been sharper. We have seen him a little cleaner and a little more intense in all of those body positions. Maybe he stayed up too long studying Chinese last night. Now Patty Simcox. Dominique Dawes. As you can hear, certainly a favored. People are loving the fact that she's back in competition. Watch this move here. It's called a Hindorf, and it's huge. <gasps> Boy, I thought she was going to come right down on the bar. She's in a little close, but she handled it beautifully. Full pirouette. This should be a one and a half. There it is. She missed that during the event competition, and it cost her dearly because she needed it for bonus points. Now she is just... Mm. Oh, she's right on here. Let's see if she can stick. Very 
good routine. Excellent routine. That should be scored from a 10. It could be a great score. Flashes of uh, 96 there. That was her coach, Kelly Hill, who, in my opinion, is one of the best coaches in the United States. She has such a wonderful rapport with this athlete, truly cares about her. And look at the height on this. And what a pro. I'm sure she could feel she was up above the bar, and she just moved her body in the air to get in position. It's gorgeous. Janie Humphrey and Dominique Dawes, an extraordinary pair of athletes and ambitious young people in everything they do. Right now, the top score belongs to Russia Team 1, 19.475. They need to beat 19.2 to get into the top three. And the score comes up 19.0. So that is a solid score. Now let's go back to Jim Lampley on the Skyline Princess. 